How's it going? Farouk here at Direct Up, here to help you prepare the right way and build the right mindset to help you pass your FE exam. Those FE exam conceptual questions. Honestly, these are not so easy to prepare for, but we know we have to because the FE exam loves to test the concepts nowadays. So this exam is purposely designed to test the classic calculation-based questions. Think of the problem solving where we take a problem statement, use the FE handbook, apply the equation, put in the right terms, look at the unit conversions, and then at the end, get a final answer. And maybe the answer is just the number, or maybe it's the answer in terms of variables. That's common as well. So those are the classic ones, and that's what we're mainly used to. I know for me, that's what I'm used to. Like from my school training, civil engineering, we look at the textbook problems, problem solving, what I'm given, use equations, and get that final answer. But now we know this exam, nowadays the FE exam, is going to test the concepts. So we have to prepare for that and do our best to prepare for conceptual type questions. So these questions, think of them as, let's say, terms. They're testing key definitions or terms. Or maybe they're testing underlying assumptions behind the equation we're using. Or maybe they're testing the big picture ideas. Possibly, they're testing processes, certain engineering processes, and certain system processes. So as a whole, these conceptual questions are not easy to prepare for, but we're gonna apply certain methods, simple methods, so we can prepare for these conceptual questions. And that's what I'll do today. Let me give you some tips to help you prepare for these conceptual questions. First tip. Build your own flashcards. So this sounds simple and you may be already doing it. If you are, excellent. Keep on building those flashcards. So what you wanna do here is build flashcards for key definitions, key terms that you see in these FE exam topics as you study one topic at a time. So you wanna put the key term, you wanna put the corresponding definition or the big picture definition, or maybe it's an equation. You wanna put the equation and write the underlying assumption, or let's say something that you're like, I have to remember this. This is something I can easily forget. Put that on a flashcard. So you wanna keep these flashcards simple, and you don't wanna have definitions that are like long paragraphs. Try your best to keep these simple and always build your own flashcards in a way that makes sense to you. Don't just copy and paste text. If you do, look at that text and really ask yourself, does this make sense to me? If it does, that's okay. You can copy and paste, but at the same time, you do want to reword these definitions as you build your flashcards in a way that you really understand. Lastly, with these key definitions, you wanna put images. So you wanna associate the definition with a picture. And you can do that easily with the flashcard platforms that are online nowadays. It's gonna be very fast. So what I'm gonna do is link in the description below a few of my favorite flashcard building platforms. You can start using it today and you can build those flashcards. How will these flashcards help us prepare for these FE conceptual questions? So first of all, we're not just gonna build these flashcards and just put them aside, let's say for one month or two months. We're building these for a purpose. We wanna practice them. And mainly we're engaging two processes as we go through these flashcards. First one is space repetition, and we have something called active recall. So it goes something like this. So let's say you build the flashcards for each FE topic. So you're going through the topic for the first time, you're covering the lesson notes and also the concepts as you're problem solving the key equations and the underlying assumptions. So you're building flashcards for the FE topic. So once you finish that, you do wanna practice them. And what you're doing there is actually engaging active recall by using flashcards. Cause you're looking at that definition and you're looking at it and you're doing the hard work in your brain to actively recall what you are already learned what you already put in for that key term. So you recall in a concept, you're recalling a definition, and you're trying to remember what you already learned in the past. So this is hard work on your brain, but it's reinforcing your understanding. So it's, it's strengthening these neural pathways so you can retain that concept for the long term. And that's essentially what we call active recall. You're actively recalling 
past concepts you already learned, and that's forced by these flashcards. That's what these flashcards are doing. You retain an information for the long term. Then we have space repetition. So it goes something like this. So you finish the flashcards for the FE topic, finish building them, then you practice these flashcards. Then what you wanna do is hold off a bit. You don't wanna go back and immediately review these flashcards because we know they're fresh. The concepts or definitions are still fresh in your mind. You wanna space your learning. You wanna probably give it two weeks, maybe three weeks, depending on the difficulty of the flashcards or the concepts, so you can get to the point where you're starting to feel like you're forgiving. So it takes some reflection and you have to really think about, am I starting to forget these concepts? Then at that point, you do wanna go back and practice the flashcards again. So you're employing space repetition. You're spacing your learning and you're not reviewing these flashcards too early at the point where they're already fresh in your mind and you already have it understood. So you're practicing space repetition by using these flashcards. Here's another tip. So you probably heard me say this before, make sure that you're not just solving problems, but you're also reading over the concepts, the theory, the underlying assumptions for the problems that we're gonna solve or for the equations that we're gonna apply. So always make sure that you're reading over good lesson material that talk about the concepts, that give you certain key definitions, key terms, give you plenty of diagrams and images that relate to the equations we're using and the overall big picture concept. So after reading that concept and going over this reading material, then you wanna practice and reinforce your conceptual understanding by solving FE type conceptual questions. So these could be just definition like questions or maybe some drag and drop questions or questions that are testing processes. So you wanna always start with reading over the concepts. So select good reading material, material that keeps it simple. The material that keeps it simple for the FE exam that throws out too much jargon. You wanna to avoid too much jargon because this is the fundamentals of engineering. You wanna have material, simple words, simple definitions, and also with plenty of diagrams. Visual learning is always best done with reading. So they go hand in hand. So always read over the concepts first before doing problem solving. Another tip. Build your own equation and summary sheets for each FE topic. So you wanna do this for each FE topic and you wanna do it one topic at a time. So let's say it might go something like this, you're reviewing the FE topic for the first time and you wanna put key definitions, key concepts on this equation sheet. Maybe it's key equations that are not necessarily in the FE handbook. So we do not really have to memorize equations because all the equations will be in the FE handbook, but maybe it's equations that will save you time. So you might be thinking, if I know this and I remember this and know how to use it real fast, I'm saving time on exam day. So you wanna practice that. Remember certain equations that are easy to memorize, that will save you time on, the, on exam day. And also it might be unit conversions. If you know that unit conversion, know it real fast, that's saving you time on exam day. So that's what you wanna put on your equation and summary sheets. And most importantly, you wanna put concepts. You wanna put key definitions that make sense to you. Again, we're not gonna just write down stuff that we do not really understand. We're putting this for a reason, we're being deliberate and putting key definitions, key concepts, and also putting images, maybe diagrams, bar charts, flow charts that relate concepts on these equation and summary sheets. So you wanna do that as you're covering that FE topic. Then what I suggest is putting the finishing touches on this equation and summary sheet. You wanna do that after finishing the whole topic because now you have a big knowledge. You have an overall knowledge and you have a lot more knowledge that you can connect together. You wanna connect all of it in that summary sheet. So evaluate your summary and equation sheet and see if you put a definition that doesn't make sense. Ask yourself, why did I put that? Did you put it for a reason? Or maybe you just wrote it down? If you did, that's okay. Just erase it, remove it, maybe adjust it a little bit, 
Put stuff that's helping you learn. Put stuff that's helping you learn the concept so you can reinforce your understanding and build that overall big picture conceptual understanding. At the end, you want to treasure these summary and equation sheets because they serve their ultimate purpose in helping you review. Last one, build your conceptual understanding of fundamental engineering processes. So here we know the FE exam will test these processes. So the best way to explain this is by looking at certain examples. So let's say a classic case is a chemical equation. Chemical equation, we know it's an overall process. So we have stuff on the left side of the equation, we call the reactants. So these combine and form stuff on the right side, the products. So how do these reactants combine? Notice that key question, how? How, how, how? So you're trying to understand how and you're trying to understand the overall process. Now, a classic case for let's say engineering, FE, engineering type questions are equations themselves. So we know we have an equation. Think of the Bernoulli equation. We have that and we have, let's say, the pressure head, velocity head, elevation head on the left side at a certain point equals to the pressure head, velocity head, and elevation head on the right side. So now the question is, how do these interact? How does each variable or component interact and change the other variable? So what happens if I increase the pressure at the left side of the equation? What happens to the velocity at the right side of the equation? How do these interact together? What happens when I increase the velocity on the right side of the equation? What would happen to the pressure? So you're trying to see connections. At the end, you're trying to understand the overall process for that equation. Last example, think of those fundamental physical engineering processes. So an example would be, let's say for environmental and civil wastewater or the water treatment plant. So that overall plant is a plant with multiple components and all of these interact and they make up a process. So what we're gonna do is look at the big picture first. You wanna avoid diving too early, let's say into practice problems or into a certain component. You don't wanna look at the little component first. You wanna look at the big picture. See how all of these interact. So you have, let's say for a wastewater plant, you have the great chambers, what does that mean? And what is its primary function? What is its primary purpose? Keep it simple and know what it does. What does it treat? Then we have the primary tank or sedimentation. What's its primary purpose? What does it treat? What does it really do? Very simple, keep it simple, know what its purpose is. Then we go, let's say, into the activated sludge system, which up comes when? After primary. So we have to know that we're looking at the process and that's helping us know these key terms. Primary, then we go into secondary. Secondary treatment is the activated sludge treatment. Aeration tank, then you have the secondary clarifier. How do these interact and what do they do? What is their primary purpose? So we know we have that, then we finish off, we can recycle, we have some sludge wasted, and also we take that sludge and treat it as a whole process. So here we're looking at the whole process, trying to understand how each component interacts with the next. And having that conceptual understanding is gonna make our learning go a lot easier. It can make it go a lot smoother because now when we're solving, let's say either conceptual questions or maybe even calculation-based questions, we know what each term means. We know what primary means. We know what secondary means. We know when the flow exit, when is it recycled? Why is it recycled? And at the end, we're asking, how does all of this work? That will help build better conceptual understanding. In summary, the FE exam will not only test calculation-based questions, it's gonna test the concepts as well. So we have to use certain study strategies to prepare for these concepts. And the ones we discussed today is mainly using flashcards. So we wanna use flashcards for these key terms and definitions for each topic as you go one topic at a time. So you wanna put these flashcards in your own words, your own definitions in a way that makes sense to you. Also, you wanna add images to reinforce that concept or the words with a corresponding image. Then after the flashcards, we can move into reading the conceptual notes that we have handy. So you wanna select quality material that's exposing you either to let's say reading lesson notes of the concepts or also let's say conceptual videos. 
talking about the concepts. So you wanna cover the concepts first before doing the problem solving. Never just dive into problem solving without covering the concepts first. They go hand in hand and most importantly, the concepts come before solving problems. After that, another tip is to build your own summary and equation sheets with concepts on these sheets. So you wanna build these for each topic, put the main equations and you wanna put equations that you can remember so you can speed up your problem solving on exam day. Maybe it's unit conversions. And most importantly, you do wanna put concepts on these sheets. You wanna put these definitions, you wanna relate certain variables to each other, put diagrams, bar charts, flow charts, and so on. You wanna fill it up with equations and concepts the big picture ideas. Then this summary and equation sheet helps you review. So after, let's say you cover the topic, you can go back to these summary and equation sheets and review what you already learned. And the last tip I had for you is understanding processes, understanding the process behind, let's say a wastewater treatment plant or even an equation. We know an equation is a process. We have to understand that, so make sure you're looking at the big picture and you're seeing how each component is related to the next, how each variable in the equation is related to another variable, and you're looking at relationships. That will help reinforce your conceptual understanding, making it easier for you to answer those conceptual questions. Please, I wanna hear more from you. Do you use certain study strategies that we did not talk about today that's helping you learn these concepts? Or maybe you already passed your epi and you use certain study strategies that helped you learn and prepare for the concepts. I would love to hear those in the comments below. So let me know and please give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.